Hello and welcome to the final video for this series of the Wyvern building. Yes, you heard that correctly, the final video. And today we have me setting fire to myself, unfortunately. I also decide to uh, ruin the kit by cutting some bits out. Uh, here we go. And then also I decide to use some resin rockets. Ooh. So in this first part of the video, we're just going to give it an oil wash, just a basic wash, so black, shadow brown, and use some blue in there, some copper oxide blue, with that being said, um, just to sort of tone it down a bit. So as you can see, I'm just putting the wash on there. Obviously, the more oil paints you put in your actual mix, then obviously the more you're going to see it. So the more you weather in, the more sort of um, white spirit you put in there, the less you see. Now, with this being a Navy-born aircraft, I can hear a little jingle coming on. Mmm. Right, this is it. Dear balls hang low, can you swing and to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Do you get a funny feeling when they're hanging from the ceiling or you'll never be a sailor if your balls hang low? Yeah, that's it. That's the jingle I was thinking of. But anyway, back to the kit. So, uh, continuing the oil wash, um, just basically put it on every panel here and there. I'm concentrating more on the engine area just because obviously there's going to be more streaks and grime coming out of those panels and less in areas where well there's not so that's the plan anyway and then as you can see I'm just slowly taking it off um, obviously the more oil paint you take off more thin as you put on there as in the white spirit the less it's shown um, and certain panels like these little square ones I'm going to make it more obvious, so I'm going to put more oil paint on there, as you can see. So that's sort of the general rule of thumb. And as you go along, you can sort of blend and push the oil paint wherever you want. And you've got more control. That's what I think anyway. And as you can see, just continuing with the oil wash. So I'm going to leave you with this and I'll speak to you in a bit. So when you've got the oil paint actually in the panel lines and it's sort of firmly in there, um, what you can use is the residual oil paint itself and just drag it down to use for some streaking as you can see there. So yeah, looking nice. And then as you can see, just cracking on with that. Okay, so we are going to work on the exhaust. I know I said I wasn't, but yeah. And let's put it this way, Lenny looked at me as well like that. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Wanker! <laughs> Wanker! <laughs> twat! <laughs> twat! Twat! <laughs> twat! <laughs> twat! <laughs> twat! <laughs> so, this is the idea. Um, this is what I'm going to do, basically. Um, and it's going to work like that. Mm, yeah anyway so i've cut one side out and it's quite easy to be honest with you all you've got to do is use a knife blade to cut it out and i'm not doing it on that side and i'll show you now so yeah this is what i'm going to do and i've tried many a time as you can see i've practiced and practiced and practiced but i am going to burn myself now it literally doesn't take long um leave it a couple of seconds and then as you can see it starts deforming and then just bend it to whatever shape you want as you can see they're not too bad but i have got some bulges at the side and to get rid of them it's just a case of lighting it again and then placing it down on something flat like that and that's how you get rid of them and then you can sand it down so the next plan of attack is to form the same as what i did on the other side so i'm just putting it up there and then using a knife or a what I'm using here is a saw and eventually I do cut through it without cutting through the instructions, don't. There we go. Lift it up from the desk and you'll be fine. And again, I'm cutting up the front, so I'm just lining it up. Just general rule of thumb, just trying to see what I can do um, to get the right shape. It doesn't matter, you can sand it down. 
and I must admit I tried about four or five attempts to try and get the same angle but it's a hole down it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all but either way cut it up and yeah some sort of like that that'll do that'll do for me once you've actually cut it out you're going to get some burring on the inside and plus the plastic is a bit too thick for what I need it for so yeah I'm using a scalpel blade just to thin it down just to get the shape or the um, well get rid of the deburring that's the major part and what I'm using now is some Meng sanders which are awesome by the way we do stock these and they do deburr and everything and they do some fantastic grits um, I think it's something like was it 180 all the way up to 2500 but anyway so that is the um, thing done next we've got to glue the end on mm. okay so the next bit is the trouser filling moment is where you can ruin everything now all I did was I drilled a consecutive amount of holes it doesn't matter how many um, so long as you don't drill outside the area that you need to cut but suffice to say I think I drilled about three or four I think three and then I left it at that enough to get the scalpel blade in as you can see and then just start cutting out um, generally speaking if you try and sort of push the scalpel blade into a circle it will go into a circle like you'll see and this is the worst bit can't even watch this bit. Ugh. Many poos shot out of my A knife. <laughs> but um, when I normally have got a brainy idea, um, it doesn't work. It um, probably normally doesn't work. But either way, um, so I'm test fitting. I'm just seeing what, if any, I need to remove. And from the looks of it, I do need to remove a bit more, which is quite good for me. Um, so anyway. As you can see, I'm just using a round file just to file off the edges and just see what I need to do. Um, and I'm going to leave you with that. Um, I'm not going to say any more. So just doing a bit more. Um, yeah, you take too, bad, too much out and you, you're fucked, basically. Yippee, another test fit. And kind of looked all right. Um, when it's all black in there, you're not going to see it anyway, but you are going to see a hole. Ooh, uh, but either way. Next is doing the bit that I should have done before the paintwork, as you can see, because it's getting too close to the paintwork, especially when I've opened it all up. Oh, God, I can see so many innuendos in this one. And as you can see, I'm just checking on the other side to make sure I don't cut too much, because I kind of did in, a, in, a, in an area... I got a bit too close, but I was more worried is when I put the exhaust in that it had actually fall in after gluing it in. But that wasn't the case, so I was all right. So once I've actually cut both sides out, as you can see, um, you can actually see all the way through. Ooh, very nice. Anyway, um, I just wanted to make sure that both sides actually fitted and both sides were fitted the right way and the actual exhaust bit didn't clash with each other or the cockpit or wherever and it it didn't and I'm putting the other side in now and I must admit it's very hard oh god very hard to hold both sides <sighs> anyway um, yeah it does look pretty cool with the side intakes must admit one thing of note is that you can't actually put the opposite side on the other side so that is a good thing so next up is painting it um so we're using matte aluminium as the base coat and then dark aluminium over the top or dark aluminium for our american friends pale burnt metal and i was going to actually use burnt metal but i didn't actually use that because i didn't see the point after using these oils so i'm going to start off with black over the top when it's painted then a mix of the yellow and the brown shadow brown in this case has a mix to make it more of a browny yellowy hue and then when it comes with the blue heat stained navy blue and the copper oxide which i think would be a nice touch with some tamiya blue as well to go over the top but we shall see now finally onto some paintwork and as you can see i've already done one before just to test out my theory and it did actually work now um, 
in the order you put the black on first as you can see there then the brown with the yellow and then the blue so i sort of did the blue and the yellow sort of together so i'm going to shut up and i'm going to leave you to see what i've done so anyway cheerio <laughs> Now with all that lovely oil painting done, now it's a case of fucking it up. Now um, what I've used here is Tamiya XF64 and I think it's um, a flat black, maybe Tamiya's or something like that, mixed together to basically get a dirty exhaust stain in there, just like so. Okay, so just like the exhaust, I've kind of modified the rockets yeah i'm afraid we've got a bit more building to do sorry really sorry but anyway um i'm talking to lenny at rtv models and he said they were crap and i got an idea in my head and came up with this <laughs> that is brilliant well done that's sorted right so anyway i used the eddard um rocket british rocket pro pro projectiles <laughs> projectiles jesus but either way so i'm kind of crossing out what i'm not going to use um really this set is not generally used for this but either way and i must admit it took me a day to figure this out um i blame lenny yes well, let's all blame lenny okay so the, the next bit is to cut the casting block off for the rockets um i'm not going to show you exactly how i did that as I just did either way doesn't matter um so this is kind of the set that you use and it's just a case of cutting all the rockets apart as you can see here um it's not as hard as what you might think it's just a case of cutting it down and sanding down the actual missile to leave the actual rail and then yeah you've got to try and use photo etched and bend all this round it looks complicated but by the time you finished it does actually make into quite a nice rocket now i'm just crimping these with some just um photo etched uh, pliers uh, and as you can see there it's fine so next bit is to make this sort of m or w shape depending on which way you're looking at it um, and you just fold it in a way as you can see here my super speedy hands um, i do actually work at this speed no i don't no i don't actually <laughs> but anyway um that is sort of the shape you're going for and you use some uh, well i do anyway some vernier calipers just to get everything all 
married up and a pen as well and you get the right distance to everything as you can see there so the m's on there make sure the base of the m is 1.5 mil that's what i generally found anyway and then basically the next thing is just to open up the um, actual photo etched to accept the top missile like so and what i found is if you put that to the top of that inside sort of bracket it works fine and as you can see um eight missiles done it took me a whole day to get them all together but it does look quite impressive and a lot better than the kit parts to be honest with you but uh, either way very nice next up on the list is the ejection seat now i can't miss this one off can i but either way i use some ejector seat wires you can see from little cars that i got donkeys years ago uh, absolutely ages ago and i'm using the yellow wire because i think both of them together twined together will be too much too thick i think but either way i glued one end in as you can see and i'm just fashioning it and just bending it into shape as i go along it took me about i don't know about 20 minutes half an hour ish sort of thing but either way um tin foil is also a good thing to make straps and this that and the other when it's painted up it doesn't look any different whatsoever and you can just chop it off like so it's easy to work with let's face it um photo etch seat belts especially these trumpeter ones but i actually was going to say they're quite thick but these ones aren't too bad um are quite thick um so what you can do here is anneal the uh, photo etch the metal parts and just leave them to dry naturally in the thin air so um sometimes more than likely i'll probably end up doing the next thing so yeah <laughs> And there we have it, that is what it should look like, or what it can look like, or what it could look like, either way. So I've used this trick before, and if you take some wire and put it around the drill bit, like so, and then when you've done that, put it into a pin vise and rotate it, you can make all manner of things. You can make oxygen hoses, you can make springs, you can make whatever you want, as you can see there. So it's just one trick that i've done and as you can see it's in position there so i'm going to shut up as usual and leave you to uh, me weathering or destroying this seat either way so cheerio must admit that the seat has actually come out better than i thought so yeah i'm quite happy with that to be honest with you not brilliant but all right and now the final sort of bits to put on in a way in a fashion is the gear doors now because i put a resin wheel bay in there yet yeah, they don't fit as usual so i had to cut the tabs down after the paint work but either way i should have test fitted these anyway but either way um, so cut them off and they actually glued down as you can see there they actually glued down very well um, yeah they're all right to be honest with you um, i did have a um, bit of a problem later on where the missiles didn't fit but either way we'll come to that in a bit so putting the actual inner board ones on again weren't much of a problem but this one didn't want to glue on as per usual but either way last doors on the other hand were an absolute doddle um they went on there's two tabs there a bit of super glue on the back and uh, some um i think i used some plastic glue some tamiya glue on the edges um just to anchor them in a bit more and there we go they're on now the last bits for the wings obviously is the um, air brakes left and right and i must admit the tab that holds them up the actual actuator i lost 
so it's made out of a 30 second Luftwaffe bit and some metal rod um, so yes I did I did lose them yes sorry <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, but either way um, so you just stick it on there and um, yeah jobs are good and to be honest with you they did it like I said actually go on really well and with making my own part I can put them wherever I want now this bit I, I, I sort of panicked because I'm using the landing gear set from AK Interactive and I'm putting it on there as you can see and um, it went sort of sludgy uh, sludgy whatever you want to call it um, and it didn't want to come off afterwards, so I shat myself, really shat myself. But anyway, I'm going to leave you to me just ruining this landing gear bay. So anyway, uh, again, cheerio, see you in a minute. As you can see it's it's kind of sort of left a bit more than what i thought it was going to do but either way i've got a nice weathered landing gear bay which i wanted so i'm happy with that so when it comes to modeling um especially your own models anyway you are your own worst critic and in this case i was critiquing my own work so i got out the airbrush and started spraying in certain areas where i think the crews would be touching around the canopy uh, around the cowling and stuff like that and especially how they get in on top of the wing and this is uh yeah one area where i thought was lacking so i wanted to give it a bit more and i found out on youtube that they actually get in the aircraft via the landing gear of all places but either way again i'm going to shut up i'm going to leave you with me airbrushing and this that and the other so again see you in a moment Uh, yeah wow um sorry about that that was um shorter than i thought oh god the innuendos again i see what you mean <laughs> i think i'm getting dubla entendre disease <laughs> but anyway um weathering time so using black and shadow brown and i'm putting white spirit on there just to break the surface tension and then i'm going to put on the oil paints as i go along so again i'm going to shut up and this time it's going to be a lot longer than i thought oh god here we go again i'm going to shut up i'll see you in a bit
Okay, so I thought I'd just jump in at this point just to explain that um, the reason why I don't really get generally get round spots or pull in anything is because as you go along, you want to be keeping the brush drier and drier, like I said, as you go along. Um, and you're just basically pushing it around and making it even and just making it one, basically. And um, there we have it. So I must admit, I do come in a bit later um, afterwards just to finish it off. All right, so next on my great ideas is using the AK True Metal Brass to do the propeller shaft. <laughs> shaft. Go ahead. I think I'm going mad this morning. And the actual um, blades of the propellers for the torpedo. And it took a while, but it did actually come out quite well, as you can see there. So, yeah, better than painting it, I suppose. And now the problems start. And because I've upgraded the actual ejection seat, it doesn't fit. So I've had to chop it down a bit. And it was just a case of just cutting off the bottom and sanding it. So nothing major to be honest with you and now is the fun bit demasking um i must admit it had been on there quite a while so i was a bit worried about the actual masking tape bringing everything off and all the paint you know like bridging a gap but it wasn't um so i'd got some actual it's not paint but it's um what do you call it um oil paint there we go uh underneath the masking tape at the top but on the bottom Dum dum dum! Oh dear, we've got some overspray, and I normally don't get overspray on there, as you can see in there. So I just basically put some, I think it was some leveling thinner, on the actual Q-tip or cotton board, depending on which way you want to say it, and it just came off straight away. Uh, as you can see, I've masked, well, left the masking tape on the inside of the canopy, but it was just a case of taking it off, it wasn't major, and no overspray. And as you can see. This is the uh, cotton bud. Um, don't like calling it Q-tip. It's not Q-shape. But anyway, um, we'll gloss over that. And it just came off straight away. So not a problem, to be honest with you. Did leave a bit of hazing, but I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, it didn't want to come off. But either way, I'm sticking it down with some of this Japanese stuff. It's all in Japanese, made in Japan, but you can see the part number there. It is awesome stuff. And it's just literally a case of putting a little tiny bit on there, as you can see, um, and it acts better than um, white glue. It seems to stick better, um, and I've never had a problem with it, to be honest with you, at all. So use that stuff, it's awesome. And also what I did was I put a blob of super glue, as you can see at the back of there, just to stop the canopy from moving around at the back. Um, wasn't a problem. Never saw a problem with it moving, but I just like doing things over the top. And then it's just a case of putting the canopy in, as you can see. Um, and I think you might actually see the top of the ejection seat slightly move down a bit. Um, and it does actually fit in. You do have to sort of spread the gap. Spread the gap. Oh, God, here we go again. But you just got to push down and um, spread it. Oh, God. And there we go, the canopy's on. And it's quite straight. It's um, spot on, actually. Just as a bit of a security um, for my own peace of mind anyway, I'll put some masking tape just to stop it from moving anyway. Oh dear me, this was the other bit that was the squeaky bum time. And it's always the case when you come to doing the exhausting. Um, you've done all that lovely work and then you go and fuck it up right at the end. But either way, um, I just used some, I used attackers for this one actually because the Tammy was wasn't working very well. So I just used like a red, brown and a black mix. And then you can black it up as you go along to be honest with you. So um, I'm going to gain shut up and you can watch me doing an exhausting. Cheerio. <music>
Next up to tie in the front end is doing the props. Now, as you can see, I'm using a grey. You can use any grey. You can use brown. You can do whatever you want. And I'm just weathering it. And then it looked a bit stark, as you can see. Well, that's why I'm going over the top of it with a bit of black. So, again, I'm going to shut up and you can watch me do a bit of spraying. So, cheerio. <music> I was actually going to leave this part off um, mainly because it would be easier to take it to shows but um, yeah I, I, I decided to glue it on anyway so um, nuts to you um, and the reason why I decided to glue it on is because I got a bit of play in my shaft Ooh, uh. <laughs> mates we are <laughs> <laughs> oh that was funny um no no seriously on a on a serious note um yeah it was uh, it was playing left and right and up and down a tad so i didn't like how it looked so i decided to glue it these are officially the last part to glue on now they go into the back of the rockets um they're like a sort of um, depth cord like an igniter sort of, sort of thing um, wire for the rockets so um, I sort of put them in between my fingers and then sort of rotate them and bend them around a bit um, and yeah it looks a bit uh, natural that way and as you can see that's one side glued in so in a minute I'll just show you how I've done the other side as so now sticking one in now this is the point where I start checking uncontrollability because trying to concentrate gain in shot and what have you but either way it does actually go in and it glues in like so Ooh. and then uh, you just bend it to the shape now you want to bend it so that it's down so when the aircraft is actually sat on the ground it's sort of because it's a tail dragger it sits back and you want to sit it further forward like so and that is that complete so I just painted them tan at the end now this is really the last part to be done and I've used um, Vallejo uh, Model Air Silver um, I can't see what it is because all the numbers are gone but either way I use some sponge this is from just a normal Eddard set and I just go along and just chip wherever necessary so either way as you can see I'm just chipping around where the pilot would get in um, and as you saw previously, I, I chipped around where they'd climb up on the wing. Um, generally speaking, they're not chipped that much. I've seen a lot of pictures and they're always quite clean. They're, they're dirty-ish, but they're, they're not chipped, which I don't get. Um, normally, it's the chip to, to hell. Um, so either way, that is that. And there we have it. That is one complete wyvern. Um, quite an effort to get this one done as in the weathering i just didn't quite have a plan or an idea of what i was going to do and i should have really to be honest with you but the kit itself was absolutely spot on i can't really uh, complain about it other than apart from the rockets as you can see there the, um, the kit parts were pants so i would actually upgrade them the uh, torpedo was pretty good i can't sort of argue with that to be honest with you but um I'm hoping that you actually enjoyed this one. Um, I must admit, I did actually enjoy the weathering. I could have gone a lot more, but again, as you can see underneath, um, I didn't, and you generally don't on them. Um, there probably isn't that much weathering on the top, but um, either way, I'm happy with it, and I don't care what anybody thinks. I am happy with it. So again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I can't wait to uh, go on to the next one so um, there'll be a final reveal video just for this alone um, and please check out Lenny RTB models 
um, he's finished his as well. Um, naturally, he's always finished before me. Um, ha ha, uh, innuendo time. But anyway, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.